Aeons ago, brothers from outer space, under the spiritual guidance of the masters of wisdom, the creators of the universe, came to Earth and settled in the core of the planet. Their task was to prepare the surface of the planet for the development of higher forms of biological life and for the reincarnation of souls destroyed in the atomic explosion which had shattered the planet Malona, Lucifer, located between Jupiter and Mars. These higher supralight bodies, completed humans, knew the divine hierarchy's mysteries of creation. They were aware of the planet's inner logos, whose consciousness gave birth to unique soul groups each able to incarnate at different times. Depending on their specific stage of development in each period, human souls incarnate in order to further their growth. They choose very specific life experiences through thousands of incarnations until they reach completion as human beings. In the beginning, our brothers from outer space built cities in the center of the earth. Agatha, the Garden of Eden, was created, and many collaborators of the Galactic Confederation came voluntarily to Earth. All colors and races of humanoids contributed their genetic material, as well as their plant and animal species, to this biological genesis. In the creation plan of the Cosmic Father, the Earth was considered a suitable living space planetarium, which would produce a universal humanoid, able to overcome all polarities and a diversity of climatic zones. Until that point in time, there had been a great diversity of non-humanoid species taking part in the development of souls. The differences were so great that the souls had extreme difficulty reincarnating into the bodies of other star systems. Therefore, the cosmic purpose was to establish a new experimental zone of creation, synthesizing all souls into a universal body type. The Galactic Confederation and its leaders, the Melchizedek Order, the Brothers of Light, descended to Earth to introduce a new type of human being and a planetary pregnancy. They created the human species in their own image and assisted in its genetic improvement. I'm a specialist in extraterrestrial visits that took place thousands of years ago. Our ancestors did not understand these visitors. They thought there were some gods. They did try to copy the technology of the heavenly creatures. Of course, not correctly, not the function of the technique. A Stone Age man who sees a car, for example, cannot reproduce a car, but he can draw it. He can carve it into rock. He can carve it into hide. All went well according to plan until the downfall of the angels. The reincarnating animal-like humans were improved through direct genetic intervention and in a short time span developed suitable bodies. The bodies of these creations became perfect in such a short time that souls from Malona, Lucifer, Venus and Mars, who in past times had already gone through cycles of incarnation and creation, were now able to reincarnate on Earth in order to attain completion. From that time on, two types of humans inhabited the planetarium Earth. The true immortal and physically etheric beings in the center of the Earth who watched over creation and its evolution and the mortal creations who purified themselves through reincarnation and developed towards human beings. In accordance with the plan, human beings brought forward civilizations which rose and fell. Different soul groups gathered their experiences in these civilizations. However, the guardians of evolution, also called angels, seemingly took the power into their own hands. They saw how beautiful their creations had become. Some of these extraterrestrials from outer space were tempted by the earthly kings who were always offering them gifts, 
including beautiful women and even their own daughters. Some of the emissaries of the Confederation gave in to temptation. The beings from outer space physically procreated children with the reincarnated beings. This was the only action forbidden by the Elohim. From then on, they had to give up their status of impartiality and immortality. They were banished from the inside of the earth, from Agatha, the Garden of Eden. From then on, they had lost their eternal youth and their androgyny. The inner closed cosmos of a complete human being, through the union of the soul and the body's personality, suffered a separation. They were thus condemned to a fall and a return to the process of human evolution. There is a time when the old female Indians tell in the Sanskrit texts that three of their Indian cities have circulated around the earth and the three cities are described in detail. The one belongs to God X, the other to God Y, the third to God Z. They are described colorfully in the meeting halls. They're described as manas. These are little vehicles which have come down to earth from these heavenly cities and often people were given a privilege. They were taken along by the so-called gods, the teachers, in the heavenly cities. And truly, the heavenly cities are described in all detail. But then an argument broke out between the gods. One was called Siva, not the Shiva, the Siva with a C-I. This Siva had, because some so-called evil spirits had settled in one of the heavenly cities, destroyed it, and he did it with a devastating beam. It is described how the city fell to the ground, fell into the earth's atmosphere, and finally in rubble onto the earth, and it looked as though splinters of a meteor had fallen to earth. Initially, the fallen gods lived for a few thousand years, but after Atlantis, to mere hundreds of years. For example, Methuselah reached 960 years of age. Yet the demigods had one consolation. They had paranormal abilities far more advanced than those of ordinary mortals. Through their higher vibrating chakras and energy centers in the physical body, they were still able to make use of their five higher senses. They were clairvoyant, clairaudient, clear feeling, clear touching and clear smelling. Furthermore, they had the gift of magnetism, which they were able to use to heal people. Their knowledge of sophisticated technologies rested in their subconscious. Their extrasensory gifts made them the spiritual guides of the outer world. The prophets, high priests, and magicians of all times have been the souls of fallen gods. Yet all this was part of the Creator's plan and these souls have made a voluntary sacrifice for the maturing humankind in order to provide it with a light on its path to becoming human and to the godly father. Once upon a time there existed on earth a high culture whose people were filled with the spirit and knew all the mysteries of creation. These secrets of creation were revealed to them because they lived in harmony with the laws. When human beings choose to live in wholeness and in harmony with the purpose of their spirit and soul, this choice opens the doors to a higher perception and the universal spirit offers the truth of life through divine inspiration. The result is global enlightenment and civilization develops. In Atlantis, lived the fourth root race which had reached the pinnacle of its development. Its divinely inspired scientists had acquired the secrets of universal energy. At that time, scientists and divinely inspired masters worked together 